Hey everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I have a tutorial on how to use the Dollar Tree foam board when you're making a shaker. And I've had a few requests for this video and I'm happy to show you my process and how I use the Dollar Tree foam board to use it to make shaker cards. Um, this is what it looks like. This is the label in the store. It's called Ready Board Foam Board and it comes in different colors. It comes in white and black. There's also been a pink version around. I haven't seen it lately, but um, I did buy one uh, about a month or so ago. But uh, in case you're looking for it, this is in the Arts and Crafts aisle of Dollar Tree, and it's a big sheet. I can't fit the whole thing. As you can see, I've cut some off already. But it's really, really big, uh, a few feet by a few feet, and it's $1.25, and it's about three millimeters thick. And when you use it for shakers, it doesn't flatten out usually, and um, it does not uh, distort the shape of your shaker too. So it makes it really easy to use for your shaker cards. Um, I thought I would show you my process from start to finish in making this shaker. And if you have any questions, please let me know down below, okay? All right, so I thought we would make a uh, Christmas shaker. Uh, I had made this last year. This is a die set from KS Craft, and this is called the KS Craft Gingerbread Man Coffee Mug Shaker. I made this in a Valentine theme, and I never got to make it in a Christmas theme, so I thought we would go ahead and do that today. And I think this is a good example for using the Dollar Tree foam board, which I did use in this project, because um, it does have um, some curves to it, which might warp if you were using traditional foam, but with the foam board, it does not, so it makes it really easy to put together. And I find, when making shakers with the foam board, as long as you have a decent size of your shaker, a decent width of the frame for your shaker, then your Dollar Tree foam board will not flatten down too much. Um, if I'm making a shaker and the, the width of the shaker itself is narrower than this, and this is about, let me see, let me get my uh, ruler. This is about, let's see. It's hard to tell in inches, about 3 sixteenths of an inch wide, I guess. Um, as long as it's like that wide, it won't flatten down too much. As you can see from this shaker, let's measure this in millimeters, it is about 3 millimeters high, so it did not flatten. Um, if I have a very narrow shaker, then sometimes it flattens down more. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but that's been my experience. So uh, this size works really well with the foam board. Okay, so we're gonna make this and I will link this product down below. I checked it's still available on KS Craft just in case you uh, wanted to grab this, but it's a really cute set. It makes this cute little gingerbread mug. So, all right, so for this, we're gonna need the die set and we're gonna need some coordinating paper. So. Uh, first of all, you're going to need some acetate to cover the inside of your shaker so your shaker bits don't move out of the way. The kind that I usually use is Duralar, and this is 0 .005 clear film. I get this on Amazon. It comes in different sizes, and uh, the price varies on Amazon. So um, sometimes I buy the 11 by 14, sometimes I buy the 9 by 12 pack. So this one is the 11 by 14 and I don't have much left but I have enough for this project. So you're going to take your acetate and cut a piece for your shaker uh, covering. So I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Let me show you what else you need. All right and then for the background of the of this shaker as you can see this one has like a sprinkle paper. I'm going to use this gingerbread paper and this is the die piece that cuts out the background and this cuts out the acetate piece as well. Okay so we have that. Oh, sorry about my tripod. And then we're going to cut out um, this piece is going to be the frame, and you can tell it's a frame because it has two cut edges right there. So this will be the frame of the shaker, and I'm going to make this brown. I like to make my frames either a solid color or a very, very small scale uh, print, just because it, you know, so you could see the print. And then for the base of the um, cup with the handle and everything, I'm going to do that with the same brown print. 
or a same brown solid. And then for the embellishments like the whipped cream and the icing, I'm going to go with the white glitter again. So I have some white glitter from Recollections and I'm going to cut all of these pieces out with the white glitter. And um, I did trim this piece so it would fit exactly. So once I get to the die cutting machine, I'll um, arrange that better. Okay, so let me cut a piece of acetate to fit this and then we'll move over to my die cutting machine. So what I do is I just, you know, put the piece on top of my acetate or paper, whatever I'm going to be cutting out and then trim around it. I don't like to waste too much paper or acetate, so I trim it pretty close to the size. All right, so we have our acetate. We have the background of the shaker, which is, oh, that die too. And then we have this one, this one, the shaker will move out of the way. It does come with the straw, but I don't think I'm going to put that on this one. Um, all right, and now let's cut out a piece of the foam board. So the foam board you're going to cut out of your frame piece as well, like this, okay? And um, I know Sharon at Craft Eccentricity, she uses an X-Acto knife to cut hers, which is probably the best way to do it. But I just go ahead and use my scissors. Um, I use large craft scissors just so I don't have to make too many cuts and just go ahead and chop a piece off. You could do it ahead of time, cut your foam board into various shapes if you want, but I never know what size shaker I'm going to make, so I just wait until I need a piece and then cut it to size. So this will go right through my die cutting machine with the same sandwich I make for the other pieces. So let's go ahead over to um, my die cutting machine. Okay, so this is my die cutting station and I am using a Sizzix Big Shot Plus. Um, it's just like a Big Shot, it just has a wider base here. You don't have to use the Big Shot Plus cutting plates, you can use the regular Big Shot plates. And sorry for the shadow, it's just my lighting's not that great over here. So let me show you what sandwich I use. Okay, so I use the multi-purpose platform for Sizzix. Yeah, there's a big shadow there, sorry about that. But this is what it looks like. Um, if you have a Big Shot or another Sizzix cutting machine, you're probably familiar with this. It has the two different shims. Uh, this one is for embossing and this one is for die cutting. So I usually just use it on the number two. All right, so we have that. And then I have two cutting plates and these are well loved, but they still work fine. So I use them until they break and that's what we're going to use. So we just have the multi-purpose multi platform and two of the um, cutting plates, okay? So let's start with the foam board. All right, so this is the way I do it. I just put the die right on top of the Dollar Tree foam board, uh, put the plate on top of my um, the base, and then put another plate on top, another cutting plate. So it's just like that, okay? And then I go ahead and crank it through. Oops, sorry, I hit my tripod. My handle is right in the way of the tripod. So it's just gonna go through. It takes a little bit of muscle to get it through, but not too bad. And I had a um, somebody commented and said that it works better if you use a manual die cutting machine as opposed to the uh, electric one. So that might be something to consider as well. All right, so that went through. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's out. Just put it through once. Don't go back and forth or else it might, um, you know, uh, flatten out. So this is what it looks like. You're going to pop your die off and then there you go. So I'm trying to get out of the shadow. All right. So when you pop out your uh, piece from the foam board, I just like to gently go around and press it out like that. Okay. And then you'll end up with that. And then you're going to take the middle part out as well. So just go around, pop it out. There's some spots are a little, you know, more cut than others, but it'll, it should work fine. Okay, there we go. Oops, a little bit of the paper backing came off on that part, but that's okay. I'll just rip it off. So there, that's what it looks like. And it flattened out a bit, but not that much. See, so there you go. 
that's what our um, foam board will look like. And I'm going to go ahead and die cut the rest of my pieces. Um, if you want to see, I'll do a couple just to show you how I do it, including the acetate. Let's do the acetate. So this is the uh, piece, the die that cuts out the acetate. So you just put that right on top, put it on your plate again, and cover it with another plate. And this one you want to run through a few times because it's acetate, it takes a few times to cut. And you hear that very satisfying crackling sound. <laughs> so go forward, go back, go forward again, and then I'm going to go back again. All right, so that was four times. That should do it. So let me show you what that looks like. So when that cuts out, so that cut out really well. It all came, it all popped out right away. Sometimes with acetate, um, it doesn't cut through all the way, but you could just go through with your scissors and cut the rest. But that looks fine. If you can see that, it's all cut out nicely. So we have the foam board cut out, the acetate, and I'll do the rest and I'll meet you back at the table. All right, so everything is all cut out. So now we're gonna start assembling this gingerbread cup. So you're gonna need some liquid adhesive. This is my favorite one. Oops, the label is all uh, worn off, but this is Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And I just like, I like this because it has a nice fine tip. It's easy, easy to control and it dries clear. And um, also it uh, doesn't clog that much, although sometimes it does, and it probably will right now. <laughs> so let's see. All right. So the first step is you want to glue your uh, die cut frame to your acetate. Okay. So you're going to turn over your frame to the wrong side, and um, we're going to run some glue all around the edges, and then we're going to put the acetate on top of that. Okay. So let's go ahead and add our glue. And you don't want to add too much because then it'll smear onto your acetate. And a little bit of smearing usually happens to me, just a little bit. And you can clean that up quick before it dries. And even if you don't, you probably won't even notice it once it's all dry and you have all your shaker bits in there and everything else going on. So don't sweat it too much, okay? But... To prevent any problems, just do a small layer of glue, just like that, okay? Then take your acetate piece, which I got glue on, so I'll wipe that off with a microfiber cloth that I keep here in my craft room. And go ahead and put that on top of your frame that you glued. And you don't want to move it around too much once you get it on because that'll make the glue smear as well. So once you press it on, let me zoom in so you can see. Once you put it on, then you want to spread the glue, but move your fingers like away from the shaker part, more towards the edges, and that'll make the glue spread more to the outside rather than the inside of your shaker where you would see it. And just go around the whole thing and do that. And this shaker has an extra piece on the top, if you can see that, um, which we probably don't need, but we'll just leave it there for now. Because if you had the straw, it would look nice there, but I'm not going to add the straw. So there's a couple of glue spots here. So what you can do is take your microfiber cloth and dip it in a little water. Um, I just have a little thing of watercolor water on my desk. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in there, wipe it off, and then make sure it's dry too. Like I said, it's not a big deal if you have some smear, you know, a few little smears on your acetate. You won't notice it once the paper is in there and your shaker bits. It's just like, you know, when you're doing it at this stage, it looks really obvious. But yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we have the acetate glued to the frame. Now we're going to take the Dollar Tree foam board. I don't know why I keep saying Dollar Tree foam board. Obviously, that's what we're using, but I don't know. I'll just keep saying it. So you're going to glue this onto this. 
And the way I like to do this is add my glue to the foam board the same way we did it to the cardstock, okay? So just go ahead and add a small bit of glue all the way around. And this is another reason why I like this better than foam, because when you um, add glue to the foam, it kind of tugs when you have your little nozzle down onto the foam, but with the foam board, it doesn't. So it glides over much easier. And you don't have to like finagle the the uh, the foam board into place. It doesn't warp the way foam does. And that used to drive me crazy when I would use foam. All right, so we have glue all the way around. So we'll take our um, other piece and press it on onto the foam board. And again, you want to get it on as accurately as possible so you don't smear that glue around. And just press it into place. Again, pressing to the outside of the shaker. And you know, you can use these tips with anything you use for, for to, you know, make the um, space of your shaker. Like if you wanted to use actual foam or die cut, um, a heavier stock paper, you could still use these tips for that, for how to glue. So there you go. That's all glued together. See, there's a little bit of glue you could see in there. So if it's gonna bother you, go ahead. You can either use your um, microfiber cloth to get that out, and just gently press it out. Or if you have like a silicone tool like this, this is like a makeup brush from the Dollar Tree, not makeup brush, like a, forget what you call these, just like a silicone spatula. You could go ahead and scrape it out like that. So yeah, that's the top of our frame or the top of our shaker. All right, so we need a shaker mix now because, well, let's let's give this a dry fit and see what it's going to look like. Because I like to do my shaker mixes once I see how the color scheme looks together. So this is going to go on top of the base, and that's going to go like that. And then we're going to have, you know, generally our whipped cream like this. We're going to have um, some icing here and there. I won't put them all on, but just so we get the idea. And then I like to make coordinating shaker mixes. So I'll probably get some sequins out that have some red and green because that's in the in this pattern paper. And then I'll probably get some gingerbread men out and some white. And yeah, we'll see. I'm going to go make a shaker mix and I'll show you what I come up with. Hold on. So here's the little shaker mix I came up, with, came up with. I have these cute little clay pieces of little gingerbread houses, and I thought they went really well with the gingerbread houses on the paper. And there's some little clay gingerbread men in there too. And then I had some like sequin kind of gingerbread people. And I added some green and white swirly candy clay pieces, some white sprinkles, white diamond dots, some white and clear uh, translucent sequins and some gold glitter ones, some red sequins, just, you know, all the colors that would match in here. But I did add the white, um, well, white is in here too, but also uh, white will lighten it up because it's a dark background. So making that shake, shaker mix uh, gave this time to dry. So now we can go ahead and create the shaker. So you just turn over your, your um, piece with the foam facing up top and then pour in your shaker mix. As to how much you should fill it up, it depends on, well, if you like a full shaker, this is probably um, very full. Um, sometimes I don't like to fill it all the way up so that you can see the background paper. But um, for this one, I think this is a pretty good amount. Sometimes I make too much, sometimes I don't make enough. But uh, yeah, this is a little much, but that's okay. I'm gonna keep it. And you just want to kind of spread it out just so um, nothing is sticking up past the foam level so when you're gluing on the background it doesn't like bubble up at all so that looks pretty good make sure there are no sequins that like to stick to the foam get them inside 
when there's some static electricity around, then they tend to like, you know, stick to everything. So there we go. We have our sequence mix inside the acetate part. So again, go with your glue and you're going to go around this side of the foam and add your glue, just like you did in the previous two steps. Some people like to use um, like red line tape for this step. Not me, I do not like to do all those curves with red line tape. It just uh, drives me crazy. But there are people who would rather do that because they don't want to have to deal with glue and any mess that glue makes. But I'm okay with that, so I go with the glue. All right, so we have our glue done. So go ahead and take your background piece, put it face down on top of your shaker. And it's important to press all around the edges. So all of those spots are closed up. You don't want any sequins sneaking out any holes or any spaces. So take your time, go around. Sorry, I was out of frame there. And that last segment, I didn't have my microphone on, so if the sound was different, that's why. Sorry about that. I couldn't really go and redo it though, so. During editing, I'll try and make sure it's loud enough. But, yep, there you go. And spend some time doing this in part so it'll dry before you flip it over. So, good reason not to rush. You know, you want to make sure it's all sealed and that it's dry before you flip it. And it's fun to flip it over because you get to see what everything looks like. So ta-da, there we go. See, yeah, that's really full. That is a full shaker. But it's cute. Love all these shaker bits. And because the foam board is about three millimeters thick, um, there's some good shaking going on in here. And really, really cute shaker bits. All right, so let's move on to the next step. Um, if you were here just to see how to make a shaker, there you go, that's the shaker part. But I'm gonna keep going and assemble this embellishment in case you're interested in that, okay? So I'm gonna go, at, go ahead and glue this to, you know what, let's see. For this, I think in my last one, yeah, I cut a piece of foam out for the whipped cream so it would be at the same level. So I'm going to go and do that again with this die set. And uh, I'm going to use the Dollar Tree foam board. I'll be right back. Okay, that's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this, glue the glitter part to the foam board. And this whipped cream that KS Craft made is really detailed because you could leave it like this or you can add the highlight pieces too. See like in the example. So I, I am going to do that, and these are the pieces that are cut out. So I start at the bottom, use my glue, and then just start gluing these on. You can see where to put it based on the curve of the whipped cream. So let me do this, and then I'll be right back. All right, that's all glued on, it looks nice. And I decide what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off this lip part since I'm not sticking like a straw or anything in there. We don't need it, so I'm just gonna cut it off because it'll get in the way when I'm trying to glue my other stuff on. So just cut that off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue this, the gingerbread shaker part. Sorry, let's get into frame here. Okay, <laughs> and I'm going to glue that onto the base of the cup. So use whatever kind of adhesive you want for this. I'm just using this because I have it out, but typically I would probably use my Beacon 3-in-1 Beacon craft glue just because it uh, covers a wider spot with the nozzle, but, you know, this is fine. Put that down as evenly as you can. I'm going to bring it up so I can see. Slide it into place. So it's shaping up. All right, now we're going to add the whipped cream up here. 
And yeah, that's why, remember, that's why I added this You Are So Sweet here, because there's kind of a gap between the um, whipped cream and the top of the cup. So we'll do something like that too. So anyway, I'm going to add some glue to the base piece here. So our whipped cream will stay there or stick there. And put that on my acetate. I didn't cut all the way flush, but it'll be fine. All right, so there's the whipped cream and we'll cover that up. But right now let's add the icing pieces. So I'm going to do the same thing I did on this one and add an icing piece across the top there. And for these, I just like to hold up, take my wet glue again. Now this you're going to be putting on your acetate, so um, be careful. Don't press it down until you have it where you want to put it because you don't want to slide this around too much. It'll really smear up your acetate. And another trick, if you have too much here, just go ahead and blot it with your finger a little bit. That way it won't spread. Just have to wipe my hand off. Okay. So I'm taking my glued piece and I'm just going to plop it down and wherever it lands it's staying because I'm not moving it. Alright, could have been over to the left but that's okay. Alright, and this one I added black eyes but I think I'm going to keep the white eyes on this one because black would kind of get lost with the dark background. So I did I cut out those eyes so those are going to go about there let's get the mouth too I'm just kind of dry fitting it here okay now to put these on I like to use a quick stick or something similar that has a sticky tip Oops, took the whole thing off just a cap And this way you can just hold on to your, oops, that's upside down, hold on to your paper piece like that. So you can either add glue to the paper piece or to the acetate where you want it to go. Um, I'm going to add it to the paper piece here. Just not too much, just like right in the middle. That'll be enough. You can see. Okay. So let's go ahead and plop that down. And then just hold it down when you take this off because sometimes this holds it down too much and you can't get it off so just hold it down with your finger while you're pulling the sticky thing away all right let's do eye number two or if you don't have like fingernails to do it you can use like your pokey tool like this and then put your eye down hold it down with your pokey tool and take that off I feel like I'm doing an operation with tools all right, uh, that one's a little off. I have to move that. Slide it up a little. Okay. All right, and here we have the mouth. So I'm going to add some glue to that. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I'll just do this in my hand. It gets messy sometimes. Keep your baby wipes handy trying to dab it on okay so yeah let me wipe off my hand all right so this one I'm just gonna put down with my fingers because it's a little bit bigger and just make it look cute this is a cute face and this came with the die set this die set actually comes with like the base piece and then you can buy the shaker frame part separately. You'll see on the link down below if you're interested. So there's the little guy. He's coming along. Let's get his other icing parts out. So let's just put them where they're going to go. There are two sizes for the icing. A smaller one for the arms and a bigger one for the legs. So I just want to make sure I have them in the right spot. Oh, this is so cute. And now I gotta think about what to put on the top to cover it up. Like on this one, I used a like a piece of ephemera. That would be perfect. You could even use 
like some brick rack, some actual fabric, some lace. Is this the right way? Yeah. I don't like to plan it out too much in advance because I like to see how it's coming together and then I'll see what kind of embellishments it needs at the end because sometimes if you plan it out in advance it doesn't look exactly the way you thought it was gonna so you have to change it anyway. So I just like to kind of do it as I go. Okay look how cute he is and this one I put a bow on. Do I have the bow? Yeah and there's two bows actually that this comes with so it comes with this one too. Maybe this is more of a hair bow, but yeah, we could add it there. Let's just do it a little different. And then we could add some bling to the middle. Thanks for watching this if you're still with me. It's nice to have somebody to talk to when I'm crafting. <laughs> okay. Ta-da! Okay. So if I had a straw, cut out I would just add that behind the whipped cream like I did there but I just I don't know I'm not feeling a straw I'm thinking this is more of a hot beverage so I don't use straws with hot beverages so I'm going to go find something to add to the uh, top of the cup and I'll be right back so I grabbed this pack from my Christmas ephemera stash and I thought something would probably go from this this is holly jolly from my mind's eye this was from tuesday morning back in the day so there looks to be some strips of sentiments here so merry christmas could fit if i cut off the sides but let's see what that deck the halls looks like and i got some peppermints out too i thought i could put those in the whipped cream oh this looks promise promising yeah Oh yeah, I like that better because this way we could cut this to size and uh, it won't be too big. So yeah, let me cut this. I'll get my small scissors. And just kind of follow the curve of the cup. That. looks cute. Then we'll put some peppermints on there. When die cuts have that little like piece there where it was punched out, does that drive you crazy? I hate those. I've got to cut that off. So I'm going to glue this on. I think I need my three-in-one glue because this is a little bit thicker so it'll stick to those um, gaps and the glitter paper a little bit better too. Sometimes glitter paper is hard to get things to stick to but this will work. All right, and that I got at Michael's. But I think they have it at Hobby Lobby too still. All right. He's looking cute. And then I'm gonna glue on these little peppermints sporadically on the whipped cream. All right, guys, he's finished. Put the peppermints on the top put one on the deck the halls also and then I put one on the center of the bow. So our shaker is done and this is a nice sturdy shaker. Um, I still didn't even put a back layer on. I don't even think I'm going to actually but I think it came out so cute. I might add some glitter to the handle too just to jazz that up a little bit but I think this will be a great card front. Um, maybe add a pretty peppermint kind of background paper to tie all the red and white together and this would be really really cute. So yeah, that's my little tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed. Again, you can use these shaker building principles with any shaker you make. Doesn't have to be this exact one. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description box. Thanks for watching. I'd love it if you'd subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye everyone.